Tell her what premium, Sonny. And take a look at the oil. Sure. And check the tires. Sure. Helena? No, that's Ben Bowman. A vineyard. Hey, where are all the grapes? You missed them. Next performance starts in June. Hey! Hey, mister, you don't want to go in there. Hey, that's Van Bolin property. It's private. I just want to go in and look around and see what I missed. What's a bee doing out here this time of year?
I never seen nothing like the way that guy plowed into that car. Ah, uh, back in Prohibition days when I was in Oklahoma, I seen a milk truck go to a bootleg, of course, run head on into a cattle truck. What happened? We ate barbecued beef for three days. <laughs> we was all hung over for the next two weeks. Hey, get out the boat. Did your family buy it, or do they rent? The Van Bolens never rent anything. My, my grandparents planted the vineyards along all these hills, and the town just sort of grew up after. Well, it looks just the way you told me it would. Does it seem the same? Oh, <laughs> it'll never change. The family's used to that. It changes in their way. But you see it happen? Sure, I seen it happen. And you know as well as I do. It was then... Mr. Van... Bolin, what? I didn't. We ain't seen you. It's been a long time, Zeb. It's almost four years. Yeah. Oh, should we have a couple of cups of coffee? Sure thing. Coming right up. Never do that to anybody before. Look who's come home, folks. It's Mr. Edward. You lay off. Oh, come on, sweetheart. Really, I think it's nice. It's nice to be known, and it's nice to be remembered, and these people seem to really like you. It's, it's not that way, Tori. Oh, sure it is. This is your town. Look, I never had a town named after me. I never really had a town. <laughs> My dad was in the Air Force, and most of the places that we lived were named after retired congressmen and generals. Here we are. Huh. Anything else, folks? Not a thing. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> <Hello. clears throat> That's why it's so important to me to meet your family. Yeah, I know, Tori. Look, you think you're going to meet a nice American family? Frozen dinners, uh, Wednesday night bowling, get out the vote and back the police. But I've told you, it's not that way. Edward, I know what you told me. I still want to meet them for myself. And they'll like me, because I'll make them like me. Look, grandmother's still European. They like to keep to themselves. They don't like to entertain strangers. I mean, they have their own ways. They're people. No, no they're Van Bolen, that's all. Give me a cup. Better make it two. Mr. Tucker, did you notice anything unusual before that uh, guy smashed up? Bunch, I ain't seen nothing unusual. Close to 30 years. <laughs> you didn't see them bees? The guy's car was full of them. They were all over it. They were Look, why don't we get some deed here and go back to San Francisco? What did you see? Oh, no. Not after it took me three months to get you this far. Well, I heard a crash. Now, look, I'm going to go for a visit. Would you like to come along? OK. It's your show. You want to see Van Bolen? Let's go. Way back during Prohibition. Do you remember Prohibition? Yeah, no. Okay. You're too young. You probably don't even remember near beer. Yeah. Yeah. Coming right up. Make him tell you about the bees. He saw me had to. Children, no pets, no cameras, huh? I had no prodigal sons. They've been off me ever since I left for law school. No law school? They have their own law.
everything around here looks perfect. Turn it around and get it out of here. Fast! Matt, you're in my way. Move it. What are you doing here? This is still my home. Yeah? We didn't know that. Fine. Well, who's that with you? A friend. You cleared it with Madame? I didn't clear it with anybody. Uh, go on in. It's not locked. It's not locked? No. If you've gotten this far, you're supposed to be one of us. It's only the rest of the world that's locked out. Ask what you're doing here. She's with me, Father. Edward, I... We didn't expect you. It was an impulse. An impulse? To return home to your family after four years? I've always felt that your departure was rather impulsive. Father... Edward, um, I'm Victoria Wells, Mr. Van Ballen. I, I've been looking forward to meeting you. brought a guest. You might say the guest brought me. You know we're not uh, prepared for guests. Father, I wouldn't even be here without her. Well, then, uh, I suppose we should find a place for Miss Wells. How about Mother's old room? Yes, that sounds suitable. She was only the guest, too, wasn't she? If you should need anything, Miss Wells, I'm sure Edward can find it for you. He'll be going to tell Madame about you now. Madame? That's your grandmother. Yeah, yeah. You'll be meeting her soon. Come on. never grow up, do they? But what would happen to me if they did? And you, you, Edward, you have had time already to try the world and its little pleasures. Hmm. Your father tells me you have brought one home. Madame, my guest. Ah, yeah. We have just been speaking of you. Grandmother, permit me to introduce Victoria Wells. I'm very pleased to meet you, Mrs. Van Bowman. I'm sure. You are from San Francisco, hmm? Oh, at the moment, yes. Um, actually, I've lived all over the world. Uh, France and Germany. My father was... Rosanna, you may serve in ten minutes. Of course, you will join us for dinner. After you've changed. <clears throat> Since my boys were small, I have expected them to dress for dinner properly. A family tradition. You do understand? Oh, yes, of course. Um, my father always taught me to respect tradition. 
Even those that are different from ours. Excuse me. No, 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 Edward, come sit beside me as well and stay for a little while. Hmm? Come, come, yeah, yeah, stop looking. Stop. I'm sorry. Yes, that is you. There was an accident. Someone we know in the village? Just some fool salesman who picked Van Bolen to get himself killed in. Greet your brother and uh, his guest, Miss Wells. How do you do? Edward, what a surprise. There was a car wreck when we came into town. Uh, was that the accident? Yes, a crash and then a fire. What did he die of? Uh, third degree burns. Primarily compounded by stupidity, from what I hear. I understand that he almost burned up that used car lot. Father, how did you... It only happened moments before we came into town. Please, please, let us forget about this unfortunate accident. It doesn't involve us, does it? No, madame. Good, good. Now then, let us enjoy our dinner. Hmm? Eat. Stop staring. This is a Van Bolen specialty as well. Santa Madeira. My father bought his cuttings from the Cape Providence of South Africa. But he was never satisfied with the New World product. That is because he was always comparing it with the great sweet wines of his homeland. And they were incomparable. To my prodigal grandson. And I hope you'll include my fiance, Victoria. Another of your surprises, Edward? A fiancé? <clears throat> ah, yes, of course. Our best wishes, your fiancé. Well, it's strangely sweet, as if there were honey. Uh, Miss Wells. Forgive me, I, uh, I wouldn't want you to be hard. You okay? Of course I'm all right. You didn't sting me. Never heard a bee flying after dark before, though. Oh, that's quite all right. Ouch. We have many, many bees here in the vineyard. They uh, came here with all of us from Africa. They understand the grapes, and we understand each other. In our home, we were in a country where living things move in a dance together. Hmm? Come, Shana. Oh, sure. Vic. 
Mr. Sands. Grandmother's bees aren't ordinary. Edward, you must sleep. You must be tired. Yes. I know, they're impossible. Why do they treat me like that? Like I was some kind of a monster? I'm not some kind of a monster, am I? Am I? I don't know. Does anything interesting happen to you during the full moon? Well, there's a full moon tonight. Why don't you stick around and find out? It's against house rules. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. No tourists, no pets, no men in rooms after dark. Yeah, and no strangers, remember? Well, that's when they're going to have to change. They better get used to me, because there's definitely another stranger on the way. No. No, you rest. Just show me where you want them. No. We are going to plant them together. Yes, madame. Ah. No, go away, go away. Ah. You're not astonishing. Really astonished. I have grown old on this land. You're not old. Yeah, I am. I am ancient. You know, it seems like only a little while since your grandfather and I came here. We always thought to go back home, but then came the war. And later, prohibition and depression and another war. And somewhere in all that hardship, this, this became our home. worth it. it. certainly is a beautiful place to live. It's more than a place to live, Miss Wells. It's our life. I'd like to know more about your life. Then come along. Come along. Come back home, madame. You know what I am. Take a boat. A dry, lifeless-looking thing and plant it deep. And you wait. And when its time has come, it will flower. It cannot help bringing forth what is in it. Yes. Edward will come back home. But that girl, she confuses everything. We could make her leave. You know, Edward will make the decision. And he will see that she does not believe. Are they very old? 
My grandfather brought the first cask from his vineyard in uh, South Africa after the Boer War. Edward, perhaps you'd like to get a bottle of the family reserve for your guest so that you might sample the fruits of the Van Bolen labors. Good idea. It's all so new to me, I find it fascinating. It is fascinating. You seem interested in learning more about us, Miss Wells. Well, I've lived in so many places, I've learned that if you want to belong, you have to be able to adapt quickly to new ways. And I take it you want to belong. Wherever Edward belongs. Must be nice adapting so readily. Well, my father was the best navigator the Air Force ever had. And he, he taught me how to maneuver in strange places and what signs to watch out for. Really? How are your signs reading on this trip? Well, so far around Van Bolen country, they've read no trespassing. Well, I'm sure your father also taught you that new territories can be deceiving, sometimes dangerous. Not if you stick to your course. You sound like a young lady that's very sure of herself. Well, I'm, I'm very sure of Edward. Shannon Block, Bennett Bull. Thank you. Hmm. You find it different? Yes, it is. How do you do it? Ah, that's the family secret. Oh, I can keep a family secret. Does it have anything to do with your grandfather's South African vine cutting? Uh, actually, it has more to do with Madame's bees. The bees? Oh, well, then the bees must <laughs> Yes, uh, but more important, they collect the honey from the grape flowers. Then the least touch, the very least touch of honey added to the wine as it ferments makes it... Incomparable Van Bolen wine. Oh. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some very dull paperwork to do. Well, I think a father has a right to expect a little relief one of these days. Edward, you'll be coming home soon. When? In the spring? Well, our school ends in May. And then? If uh, Miss Wells will forgive us, uh, I think we should discuss a little business. Oh, of course. Well, let's get it over with. What kind of business did you have to discuss? The only business worth discussing, Edward. Family business. from out of town. How harmless are our little bees. Oh, yeah, Shana. Come, 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 come. Yeah. Ah, oh. oh, you? Come, 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 come. There you are. La, la, la. Go, go. Go. Go, go. Go, go. Go, go. Go. Go home. Yeah. <laughs> ah, there you are. Come. Yeah. Go home. Make a sign. Look. Okay, that's a great show. I know what I saw. Yeah. And what I saw was that guy in the car getting eaten alive by bees. Just like those. Oh. Oh, you like me? Well, I like you. I love you. Yeah. Yeah. Go bye bye. Go bye bye. Uh, have you ever known your bees to swarm anyone, Mrs. Van Bolen? Bees are not carnivorous, Mr. Jeffrey. Ah, 
are they, Victoria? Well, I've always heard they prefer flowers to flesh. Well, thank you very much for your help, Mrs. Bendel. Of course, Mr. Jeffrey. Oh, oh, by the way, I must remember to ring up your superior to compliment him on your efficiency. The bees stay with us because of our flowers. Acres and acres and... Wait. Ah. I am sure Mrs. Jeffrey will enjoy these. <laughs> well, thank you very much, ma'am. Yeah. Come on, Roger. Is there a medicine or...? Yeah. Come, baby, go. Huh? Go, 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 go. That's a boy. That's a boy, yeah. That is no medicine. Ah, quite lovely. You have made plans? Yeah, of course. And they do not include this place, your home. Well? I guess they don't. And why not? Because it's not the way I want to live. Fine life? It is for you if that's what you want, but it's not for me. The family needs you, Edward. Do you remember the kid uh, who came to visit me from the village school? The only kid you ever let on the place. Some child, yes. He. Uh... We were playing, you know, and knocked me over. He didn't mean to hurt me. It was an accident. They were on him in seconds. They thought... That was a long time ago. What about the accident in the village? That was yesterday. One should think of the future, Edward. That's what I am thinking of, Father. My boy. They have always left to me what did not go into the making of wine. Maybe if you'd let them do more for you. And, and people need to be free. Are you youngsters? People are never free. They always serve. If they are weak enough of spirit, they serve only themselves. They are strong. They serve the living community of those they love. They take hold. They are the center. The center of the heart. No. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. Yeah. Of the family. Yeah. But there's more to a woman than family. Oh, no. The rest of it is illusion. A woman without family has nothing to cry for, nothing to yield to. What good is life to an empty woman, huh? Make a woman's life sound awfully hard and unrelenting. It would seem so only to empty women and hollow men. This life is a wonder. It's our destiny, our heritage. We make life, protect it. We mourn its passing for life. It's sweet. This is not a cheap holiday. What's all this talk about a holiday? You want to get away from it all? Come on, we'll go for a walk. We were speaking of those things most worth having. Like living your own way? With someone you love? You seem to have lost your values. I'd like to walk, yeah. Values, madame. What would you call the notion that one can live only for himself? I don't have to answer you. Of course not. <laughs> of course not. Who must answer to an old woman? Please, Edward, let's go for a walk. Madame, I... Oh, go along, go along, my dear. We will speak again. 
Well, you are free. What you're thinking? I'm not. What? Thinking. Well, you better think. Your grandmother never accept me. Look, forget her, please. Okay, I can, but can you? She really gets to you, doesn't she? She raised me. I mean, you damp down all the feelings of, of love and resentment and fear and respect, but. But now you're wondering about us. No, darling, it's not like that. It's duty, Tori. It's what she taught us. The thing she doesn't see is that... What? My duty is with you now. I mean, you're my family. She won't understand. But it doesn't make any difference. I got you. That's not right. Nobody should have to choose like that. Oh, forget it. That's their way. When I was little. I'll do what I can, okay? All right. Mr. Tucker! Oh, Lordy, young lady. What's the matter? Somebody's hurt down the road. I need to call an ambulance. I haven't got any money. Could you... Oh, wait a minute. There you go. Just ask for the state police. They'll send an emergency vehicle. Who was it? What happened? I don't know. A lineman fell. Uh, yes, operator, could you get me the state police, please? It's an emergency. Hello, this is Victoria Wells. I'm calling from Tucker's Cafe in Van Bolen. Yes, there's been an accident. We need an ambulance. <laughs> Edward's down the road. He needs help. This is Dr. Van Bolen. I'm awfully sorry. There's been a mistake. Yes. Everything's all right now. Oh, that's okay. Thank you. There hasn't been a mistake. The man needs help. And whatever it is, we can take care of it. We don't need any help from anyone. I live here. Well, I don't. How the hell did you find out about... Your girlfriend seemed to think this was a police matter. Something you can do for isn't there something you can give him? He's dead. Now what happened? He was working on the pole, and he opened the transformer box. And the bees. Look at him, Edward. There isn't a single mark on him. I'm going to take him over to my office. 
Make out a death certificate. I think I'll go along with you. There's something we gotta talk about. Leave it alone, Edward. Now the bees frighten him. And bees frighten everybody. Edward. Just leave it alone. Is it still all in the family? The family is everything. But you never understood that, did you? Always going your own way. No, I always go my way. Away from this partnership with the... The bees belong to us. Are you sure you don't belong to them? Dr. Van Bowen? Uh, we got a call a while ago from down at Tucker's Cafe. It uh, apparently got cut off, something about an accident. Yes, uh, a lineman for the phone company fell. Roger Newsom? What happened? No. He was working on a pole and he fell. Why? Roger was an old hand. He worked poles for ten years. What made him fall? We didn't see him. He just yelled and he fell. We? You and Dr. Van Bolen were together. No, no. My girlfriend, Victoria, and I. By the way, what's your name? Edward Van Bolen. You wouldn't have any objection if I had the, the coroner take a look at Newsom, would you? I am the coroner here. You wouldn't be the mayor and the city attorney, would you? You know, that's funny, Sergeant. That's real funny. You've got a nice sense of humor. Now, if you'd like an examination of your own, you're certainly welcome to it. There's no mystery here. That's a matter of opinion. Medical opinion? Why don't you let me set that examination up for you, huh? Oh, I'll take care of that, Doctor. Well, there doesn't seem to be much else for me to do. So it seems. For now. My dear, what? Me? I see. He did. And that was. Oh, ah, that is reassuring, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Uh, Pullman, I'll speak to you later, huh? Come, come, sit and have some food. Hmm? Quick, thank you. Oh. Well, we saw a bad accident down near the terminus. Just for what happened? What did you see? I'm not sure. Um, I heard a scream. 
Edward went to help, and I ran into town to phone. Yeah, then you saw nothing. Only the man all crushed. Edward should have let someone else see to the man. No, there wasn't anybody else. There is always someone else. Edward must learn. He's been away a long time, Mrs. Van Bolen, and he's learned quite a lot. Such as? Such as that there is no one else. The tea is cold. Yes. I have known my grandson for 25 years. He's headstrong, impulsive. But in the end, he will do his duty, unlike those of his generation. I'm sure you're right. And his duty is to his family. It is. We've spoken of it often. <coughs> Ah, honey, my dear. No. No, thank you. I'm supposed to watch my weight. You have a lovely figure. I'm sure you are attractive to many men. Perhaps it would be best for you to return to your San Francisco suitors and let Edward return to his family. But you see, I am his family. <laughs> Monster. Monster. Edward thought I shouldn't tell you. Tell me what? We've been living together for two years. And I do want you to know before we leave. No what? About the baby. Tell us yet, Matthias. Can't we get someone, a, a specialist? You won't need a specialist. How? How? I will tell you how. By bearing all the pain, all the responsibility of fifty hard years. Specialist Edward, we had them up here two years ago. We had four of them here. They did all that specialists can do. I can't believe that helmet. After all, with modern medicine. Modern medicine can't cure 70 hard years, Father. It can't cure a heart that simply won't work. Helmet, were there any marks on her? Sure. All the marks of a long life. He means bee stings, Helmut. Bee stings? Well, now, how could there be? No, that's not true. Because I saw her, and they were all over her, and they killed her. You must be losing your mind. Bee stings? On Madame? <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
Sergeant Jeffries, I saw you on the porch with Mrs. Van Bolen. You're not a Van Bolen, are you? No. Not yet. Um, I'm Victoria Wells. These Van Bolens, they uh, have a lot of power in this area, but nobody seems very close to them. Well, I wouldn't know. I'm only close to one of them. I can't get anything out of anybody. That's why I'm out of uniform and uh, on my own time. Wells, you turned in the accident report when Roger Newsom fell. Yes. What did you see? Well, nothing. Oh, only the man. No bees? Bees? No. No. <laughs> no bees. The bees here. They fly at night, have you noticed? Yes. I've been asking around, and only one kind does that, African bees. They look just like honeybees, but there's a difference. They seem to have a single mind, and they kill. Tori! Tori! I better go. Tori! Victoria. Here. I had to get out. Look, everybody's half crazy with grief. I want to leave. Terrific. Tomorrow. No, now. If we don't go now, we're never going to go. I've got the funeral. I have to be here. <laughs> I don't think I can bear it. You don't have to. Look, first thing in the morning. We'll get ready. You'll get packed. And we'll get in the car, start driving to San Francisco. <laughs> no classical music, just rock and roll. You can drive. Ten minutes. of the strong came forth sweetness, says the book of Judges. As Samson found, when he returned to the lion he had slain, and found there a swarm of bees and a comb of honey, so it was with this woman, Maria Van Bolen. She was at once the unity and beauty of a family we all love and respect.
a young woman, she crossed an ocean and a continent to be among us. She raised her family here, her son, Rudolph, and her grandson, Matthias, Helmut, and Edward. They came across the world from a war that had turned their native land into a battleground. They came seeking peace, a place where things could be grown, and they gave much more to the land than they took away. Like so many of the rest of us, their memory extended back to a Europe from which their ancestors had come, amidst other ages, other wars. They continued the quest of their forefathers, looking for the great good place, and found it here on the edge of the Pacific. They put down roots. The roots of those vines sustain a whole community. Together they brought forth the sweetness of grapes and flowers, and made these hills an image of paradise. Look about you and you will see her work. Hills planted, waiting for the pulse of springtime to burst into flower. You will see her son and grandson, each determined to carry on the family tradition she forged in those hard early years when first she came to this land. But now her sojourn in this world is done beyond our imagining. A land of milk and honey. No, no, for God's sake. No. going on? What are you doing now?
Why wouldn't I be? Are you all right? Trouble at the funeral. I'm, I'm glad you weren't there. Trouble? More like a riot, Miss Wells. A few people were stung by bees. That's all. Well, that's awful. Thomas, can't you do something for the sergeant? Don't bother. Is everything all right here, Miss Wells? Everything here is as it's always been. the whole town or worse. Sergeant, bees are everywhere. The flowers at the funeral attracted a number of bees. Then, unfortunately, that boy was foolish enough to excite them. You probably wouldn't have been stung at all if you hadn't run from them. Yes. When you stand still, we let you alone. It's over now, and I'm sure it won't happen again. How can you be sure? It's a feeling I have. If I went for a judge, and told him what I think, and asked for a warrant to search this place. He'd turn you down. I think I was crazy. I hope your feeling is right, Miss Wells. I need a drink. Allow me. Look, we'll be leaving right away. Oh, I don't think so, Edward. Your family needs us now. But our life. I mean, our child. Well, this is a beautiful place to raise a child. I'm going back to San Francisco, Victoria. Edward, don't be impulsive. Again. Edward. Please, son. Join us. Boland, your health and a long life, madame. 